you can't spend more than you earn without getting into debt. And if you have debt, you have to pay back the debt. The only difference is you can print the money. And so the question is, does what ends that or is there no end to that? Legendary investor Ray Dalio is back in the news, warning investors that the greatest wealth transfer in history is well underway. But unfortunately, it's not all sunshine and rainbows with this transfer of wealth, leaving central governments around the world vulnerable to a massive debt spiral. Ray Dalio recently wrote about this topic on his LinkedIn page, where the story was quickly picked up by mainstream media and spread across the internet. In this video, I'm going to explain exactly what this wealth transfer is and why it's not really the happy news story you were expecting. Dalio founded Bridgewater Associates back in 1975, and today it stands as the world's largest hedge fund. Bridgewater's long-standing success skyrocketed Ray's network to over $19 billion and has established him as the world's most respected macroeconomic investor. And it's ultimately this respect that propelled a simple LinkedIn post about the economy into a viral media story published across all major news sites. So what's this wealth transfer Ray refers to? He's referring to the transfer of trillions of dollars over the last few years from governments and central banks to citizens, which is actually helping average Joes handle the current economic downturn. Dalio notes there was a big government-engineered shift in wealth from one, the public sector, aka the central government and central bank, and two, holders of government bonds, to three, the private sector, that is, households and businesses. This change helped regular people and businesses stay financially healthy during tough economic times, but it made the government's finances look worse. Ray talked about how regular people are doing pretty well. They have good incomes, more savings and low unemployment, which means they're earning more money from their jobs. This also means they aren't affected much when the Federal Reserve makes it harder to borrow money. But the big issue Ray is talking about in this post is that in order to make regular people better off, the government and the Federal Reserve had to make their own finances worse. Now, everyone has to deal with that problem. So, how did this happen? Ray explains that in 2020 and 2021, the US government spent a lot more money than it earned. When this happens, the government borrows money to cover the gap. They do this by having the central bank create new money and buying government bonds. This is what happened over those two years, and it caused the Federal Reserve to own a lot more government bonds. A big chunk of this money went to regular people and businesses. If we check how much money people in the US are saving, we can see a big increase when the government provides economic help. But in 2022, when prices were going up, and lots of people had jobs, they decided to stop giving so much help with money and policies. This caused some problems. Because prices were going up and many people had jobs, they decided to raise interest rates. Ray Dalio mentions that real bond rates went from being really low to more normal. But this increase in interest rates made the value of existing government bonds drop. People who owned US Treasuries saw their investments lose value on paper. This was a big part of the banking trouble we saw earlier this year because some banks took a risk with interest rates. But we shouldn't forget about the Federal Reserve. They hold a lot of US Treasuries too. As interest rates went up, the Federal Reserve's collection of government bonds started to look worse and worse. That's a problem. On top of that, the government itself is having trouble because it still spends more money than it earns. With interest rates now higher, the government has to pay more interest on its debt this year and in the near future. So, taking on more debt becomes more expensive. But if they have to borrow, they have to do it, even though it's costlier. So, what's really happening here is that the government will have to use more of its money to pay interest on its debt. This means they might have to do one of three things. Either find more money later, cut down on spending, or increase taxes. But since they probably don't want to do the first two, they might just keep borrowing more money, which can lead to a dangerous cycle of debt piling up. Ray Dalio points out that, just like people and businesses, governments that borrow money have to make regular payments on that debt and eventually pay back the actual borrowed amount. This can be tough. 
The difference is that governments have the power to collect money through taxes and create more money through the central bank. So, that's what we can expect to happen. Now, will this be a big problem? Well, not so much in the short term, but it could become a big problem later. Ray is suggesting that for now, it's easier to postpone dealing with this issue. But there's a limit to how long we can keep doing that. Looking ahead in the short term, Ray Dalio thinks that unless there's a situation where the government is trying to sell a lot more debt than people want to buy, we might have a period of okay, but not great economic growth and somewhat higher inflation. This is something he's been talking about for a while, where inflation stays high even when the economy isn't doing so well. But he also admits that it's hard to predict the future because of things like politics, world events, the environment and technology. But when Ray talks about the long term, that's where things start to look more concerning. He believes that based on history and looking at the numbers, it's almost certain that government budget deficits will be large and they'll likely grow even faster as the costs of servicing debt and other government expenses increase. As these costs rise, governments will need to borrow more money, creating a cycle where they keep borrowing more and more, and central banks might have to print more money to buy this debt. This cycle can lead to problems for economies and markets. Ray believes in strategies to avoid a tough situation. One clear strategy is for the United States to fix its budget deficit first and then work on reducing its debt. The challenge is that taking these steps can be tough and unpopular in politics. It often means either cutting spending or raising taxes, which isn't a popular way to win votes. But with determination, a country can improve its financial situation. Ray explains this in detail in his YouTube video called How the Economic Machine Works. He talks about a rare but possible situation where an economy can go through what he calls a beautiful deleveraging. Deleveraging can either be smooth or painful. Usually, when people, businesses and governments need to reduce their debt, they start by cutting their spending. This is known as austerity. As we've seen, cutting spending can be tough and lead to deflation, which means prices and incomes go down. Businesses might have to lay off workers, which leads to higher unemployment. Many countries are now looking to cut spending because taking on more debt at higher interest rates can lead to the kind of debt problems Ray mentioned earlier. But the issue is that cutting spending across the board can lower people's incomes and lead to more joblessness. So, the next step is to reduce debt. Many borrowers can't pay back what they owe, and when they can't repay their loans, it becomes a problem for the lenders who gave them the money. People start to worry that the banks won't have enough money to give back to them, so they rush to take their money out of the banks. This puts pressure on banks, and some people, businesses and banks can't pay their debts. To solve this, lenders often agree to restructure the debt. Debt restructuring means that lenders get back less money or get repaid over a longer period of time or at a lower interest rate than originally agreed upon. It's a way to reduce the debt burden. Lenders prefer to get something rather than nothing. But here's the issue. Even though the debts are lower, debt restructuring makes people's incomes and the value of their assets go down faster. This makes the debt problem worse. Similar to cutting spending, Debt reduction can lead to deflation. All of this affects the government because lower incomes and higher unemployment mean the government collects less in taxes. At the same time, the government has to increase its spending to help the growing number of unemployed people and stimulate the economy. During this process, the government's budget deficit gets bigger because it spends more than it collects in taxes. This is what's happening when you hear about the budget deficit on the news. When governments spend more money than they have, they need to do two things. Either get more money from taxes or borrow it. But when people's incomes are dropping and there are a lot of unemployed people, where does the extra money come from? Well, it often comes from taxing the wealthier individuals. This is the third part of a beautiful deleveraging plan, sharing wealth. It's not about taking money from the government and giving it directly to people. 
It's about taxing those who have more money and giving some of it to those who have less. This helps the government fix its budget, especially when a small group of rich people have most of the wealth and can afford to pay higher taxes. Now, this third part of the plan also leads to deflation, where prices and incomes tend to go down. But then comes the fourth part, which we all know. Inflation. Unlike cutting spending, reducing debt and sharing wealth, printing more money leads to inflation, where prices go up. The central bank can create new money and use it to buy financial stuff like bonds, but it can't buy goods and services. The government, on the other hand, can buy things and give money to people, but it can't make new money. So, to boost the economy, the central bank and the government work together. The central bank lends money to the government by buying government bonds. This lets the government spend more on things like stimulus programs and helping unemployed people. It also increases people's income, but adds to the government's debt. However, it reduces the overall debt burden of the economy. It's a tricky balancing act. Policymakers need to find the right mix of these four ways to reduce debt. They need to balance the ones that bring down prices with the ones that make prices go up to keep the economy stable. If they get it right, there can be a smooth, beautiful deleveraging. In the US, we've seen a lot of money printing because it's the easier way out. But it's also caused high inflation. Now, the US needs to cut its spending and increase taxes to fix its worsening budget problem and avoid a big debt mess. Ray Dalio is worried whether the US can actually do this or if they'll keep printing more money, postponing the problem and heading towards a debt crisis. So, those are Ray Dalio's thoughts on the current US debt situation. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more weekly investment tips. Leave a comment below. Happy investing.